Buenos dias, mis amigos. Alright, so I was going to do, uh, you know, a little study on this video here and um, sort of make the corrections, you know, show the errors, make the corrections, but then uh, I stumbled upon this video here and I thought, well, why even, uh, why even listen to it? I got 33 seconds into it and I decided, hey, let me look at it fresh with you and just uh, offer some uh, you know some scripture some opinions on this video here okay, I can already tell just by the title alone I already know what this guy's gonna say or what he should say I already know what he should say I have a very strong suspicion that he's gonna make a mistake all right that's all I'm gonna say just because of that term, millennial. Just because of the question, really. It, it's a stupid question. It's as if this person has no understanding of the Bible whatsoever. And I'm going to show you. question that is can people be saved during the millennial reign let's take a look at Revelation chapter 20 okay and let's read about the millennial reign of Jesus Christ now oh. I know people are going to look at Revelation chapter 20 and they're going to say well wait a minute Revelation is a series of visions and so this isn't really the, the hey, let me just say there is no millennial reign of Christ in Re Revelation 20 that, that's unbelievable that's an incredible statement to make it's an incredible statement to make anybody with the Bible, with the King James Bible, can see that there is no 1,000 year reign of Christ anywhere. Not in Revelation 20, it's not in the Bible anywhere at all. The absolute thing, this is just a I mean, vision. quite frankly, if I'm being frank, the guy just lied. He's a liar. He exposes himself as a liar because Jesus Christ does not reign for a thousand years. And this ought to drive you nuts. It drives me nuts. I don't know why it doesn't drive you nuts if people just lie to you. Instead of it driving you nuts, well, you just, okay, if that's what it is, that's what it is. Oops. No. I mean, this should set a fire under your rear end. People lying to you, and not just to you, but your your children, your family, your friends, lying to everybody. And just being matter of fact about it. Just being, you know, well, like they have no conscience at all. When they lie about the Bible, they are making God out to be a liar. And that doesn't light a fire under your rear end? If that doesn't light a fire under your rear end, nothing will that John was seeing and yes this is a vision that John was seeing because in verse number one he says and I saw an angel coming down out of heaven okay and so yes this is a vision that John saw um, but when we look at this no, no buts about it no you stick that in your butt in verse one and I saw an angel come down from heaven there are no buts about it it's not an angel butt, it's not your butt, it's not a butt, but. It's not a butt. There's no butts about it. If you go back to Revelation chapter 1, if you would have read it, you would have known. If you would have read the very first verse, you should have known. In Revelation, I'm sorry, yeah, in Revelation 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. So Jesus Christ gave John visions sent by an angel, things which must shortly come to pass. 
let me let me try to say that again. Jesus Christ sends his angels. Um, yeah, Jesus Christ sends his angels to show John these visions, these things which must shortly come to pass. Revelation 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key. I saw an angel. This is another vision. You read this all throughout the book of Revelation, vision after vision after vision. We're basically getting these insights, these visions, these pictures of the same thing, but from different angles, different ways of looking at it. All right, but it's the same thing. It's all connected. It's all consistent and it's all connected. It's and it's all supported with the rest of the Bible from Genesis to Jude. Right, am I getting that right? From Genesis to Jude? Am I saying that right? From Genesis to Jude. All this is everything in Revelation 20 is supported by the rest of the Bible. Okay? All right. This there are sometimes that it's very obvious that John is saying metaphorical things. And there are sometimes that what is uh, looked at are something that is a little bit of a, of, of a non-metaphorical thing, okay? And so, you know, when you look through the book of Revelation and, uh, you know, you see a red dragon, okay, well, that is a metaphor about something. Uh, I just, I'm just curious here, I, you know, I, I like to double-check myself. I, love, I like to double-check others, too. Red dragon. Red dragon. Red dragon, that great red dragon, right there, Revelation 12. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns upon his upon his heads. Yeah. Yeah, right there. So, um, all right. So I'm not sure what he's talking about. Uh, when you see people who are being beheaded for the cause of Christ, that's not a metaphor about things. I mean, you can just tell that from, from the language of it, right? And so, in verse number one, I saw an angel coming down out of heaven and having the key to the abyss, holding in his hand a great chain. He sees the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil or Satan. So that's all. All right, so obviously this person here... <laughs> doesn't believe when whenever you hear ancient serpent um, that's a red flag that this person doesn't believe the Bible at all doesn't believe one single word out of this book right here he believes that there's an imaginary Bible in that he's never seen so this is just the best that he could find yeah, that that closely resembles this imaginary book that doesn't exist right he doesn't believe this he just believes this is as close as it gets in other words he does not believe this at all not a single word of it okay and then of course what you ought to know is that there is no imaginary perfect Bible. Your perfect Bible is the King James Bible. It comes directly from God above. It is the words of God. Think about what Jesus says. Jesus says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It's not just words on a piece of paper. This here, this is just words on a piece of paper. All picturesque, isn't it? The Paul? King James Bible is the pure word of God. It's from God. Or is the dragon and the serpent? Let's talk about the devil. And bound him for a thousand years. He threw them into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. 
So when we read about that, that really doesn't sound very figurative, does it? Okay. So verse number 4 says, I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been in authority to judge, and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his image, had not received the mark on his their foreheads, uh, foreheads or on their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ. Right, there it is. Okay, they came to life. So the these headless zombies came to life and lived and reigned with Christ. A thousand years. A thousand years. All right, so this is what I call the zombie doctrine. You got beheaded people living and reigning with Christ for a thousand years. Only, only the beheaded people. Right? Keep that in mind. Only people without heads walking around for a thousand years. That's the zombie doctrine. Right? And these zombies here, they don't put any thought into what they're teaching at all. All they're doing is repeating what other men have taught. And this is consistent because he does not believe this book that he's reading from. He'll believe Reverend Schmitty, who tells him this is uh, the way it is, and uh, so all right, drink my coffee and read this book, and whatever you say, I'll repeat. So that's that's the beauty of the school system is that they teach children just to repeat what the teacher said, and this gentleman right here is just repeating what his teacher has said not putting any thought into this or God above at all hence the word millennial reign and so when we talk about the millennial reign we are talking about the thousand year reign of Jesus that's going to happen after he comes back alright there it is after he comes back all right. So Jesus comes back and he reigns for a thousand years and then that's it. That's it. That's all there is. So yeah. Yeah, you get it. You get resurrected, right? I guess. But then after a thousand years, it's over. So, what the hell's the point? What happens after... Oh. What happens after the thousand years? Oh. Well, after the thousand years, God kills us all. Fire comes down from God and devours us. kind of makes life pointless, doesn't it? Jesus comes back, he reigns for a thousand years, and then fire comes down from God and devours us. That's a hell of a doctrine you got there. That's a hell of a doctrine. So, Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, he's on earth, and we're with him, and then fire comes down from God and kills us all. I mean, that's, that's just brilliant. Kind of makes you wonder what the what's the point of even reading the Bible, huh? Right? Who cares? Just drink my coffee. It happens after he comes back because Revelation chapter twenty follows Revelation chapter nineteen. No, it doesn't. You know, it's interesting because he started off by saying, "Hey, Revelation twenty." starts a new vision right there and I saw an angel come down from heaven that's a new vision just like what we read in Revelation 1 Re Revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show servants things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified about his angel unto his servant John and so an angel is showing John a vision of a thing that must shortly come to pass so he started off hey yeah but then now he's backtracking and say no 
I remember now. I remember Reverend Smitty. He says Revelation 20 is a continuation of Revelation 19. To hell with what the Bible says, right? To hell with God. I'm going to listen to Reverend Smitty. Reverend Smitty says 20 is a continuation of 19. I wonder if there's some booze in that coffee. Okay. Okay. So... What we have here is these people coming to life, reigning with Christ for a thousand years. Notice in verse number... What's he doing? Is he reading a script? Five, there's a little bit of a parenthesis there. It says the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. All right, so... He's... Re I don't know what he's reading. So he's got the headless zombies are going to be resurrected. And then a thousand years later, there are going to be a diff there's going to be a different resurrection. All right, and so follow me on this. So in Revelation 20, when it says the first resurrection, these people are teaching that the first resurrection is the zombies. Right? And then notice there is no second resurrection. Wasn't that weird? Why would there be a first resurrection? No mention of a second resurrection. I mean, did anybody thought about that? I mean, of course not. I mean, until Reverend Smitty says something, he's not going to talk about it. Why would he? Because he doesn't even know what he's talking about in the first place. And it's interesting to me. People can't figure out. What's the first resurrection? Oh, the first resurrection of the zombies. Walking around without a head. Or, you know, I've heard people say, oh, it's just uh, believers. The believers. Right? They're the first resurrection. Huh? You try to sugarcoat it as much as you want. That's fine. Doesn't make it true. Try to soften it and sweeten it up. Doesn't make it true. Right? So, the res apparently, the resurrection of Jesus Christ means nothing. In fact, you might as well call Jesus a liar. I mean, that's what you're doing. You're implying that he's a liar. Aren't you? I mean, if the saints or whoever, you know, whether it's zombies or saints or, or a combination of the two or whatever, if they're the first resurrection, then Jesus is a liar. Because Jesus says, I am the resurrection. And you're saying, no, Jesus is not the resurrection, I'm the resurrection. I'll be the first resurrection. If you're the first resurrection, then Jesus is not the first resurrection. It's either you or him, buddy. It's either, you, are you the resurrection? Or is he the resurrection? Yeah, you can't reconcile the stuff, man. You can't. You no, you might want to go back to Reverend Schmidt and ask him about that, and he'll give you a bunch of smoke and blow it up your butt, and you won't understand any of it anyways, because you never understood it in the first place. For an as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, but every man in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. I can't you can't figure it out, can you? You can't figure it out. Who's the first resurrection? But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept? You can't figure it out, can you? You can't figure it out. Is it Jesus or is it the headless zombies? Which one's the first resurrection? Is it the saints? The headless zombies? You? Or is it Jesus Christ? Who's the resurrection? Who's the first resurrection? As if Jesus being the resurrection is different from being the first resurrection. You can't connect the dots, can you? You can't figure it out. Why? Because you don't believe the Word of God. You don't believe this is from God. You believe this is a translation 
from an imaginary book that does not exist. That's what you believe. You don't believe that these words are a living spirit, do you? You don't believe this is a living spirit. You don't believe this is God. You don't believe Jesus when he says, The words that I say unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. You don't believe that, do you? And therefore, you don't believe what you're reading. And therefore, because you don't believe what you're reading, you don't understand it. And you shouldn't understand it. And you deserve to believe a lie. But now is Christ risen from the dead and come the first fruit to them that slept? For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. You can't figure this out, can you? For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ that is coming. I want you to notice something here. Four dots. So I want you to notice this. I'm going to connect four dots. I want to see, I want to know if you can see it. Christ the first fruits, right? Christ shall be made alive. Resurrection, first fruits of them that slept. All right, connect the dots here. It's all the same thing. First fruit to them that slept. Resurrection. It's the same thing. The first, it's the same thing. First fruit to them that slept. Resurrection. In Christ shall all be made alive. Christ the first fruits. Connect the dots. It's all the same thing. So you, you, if you were able to connect all those dots, and then read <laughs> Revelation 20, I don't, I don't know who the first resurrection is. I think it's... <laughs> I mean, really... All you're doing is waiting for Reverend Smitty to tell you. Rather than believing the simplicity of the scripture. The rest of the dead live not again. Until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. All right. But the rest of the dead lived not again. All right. So, slow down and think take a deep breath try to lower your heart rate and look the dead they do not live again until after this time period All right, so let me try that again the dead Live not again until after the time period. All right. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is that he that has part in the first resurrection. First resurrection. Now, let's back up. And they lived and reigned with Christ. Right? But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Now, relax and think. Just relax. Calm yourself, okay? There were people before Jesus Christ laid down his life. All right, there were people before baby Jesus was born that were saved. There are people now who are alive 
that are saved. There are people that were alive when baby Jesus was born and have since died. Okay, there were people that were born after Jesus resurrected and ascended to heaven who were saved but have since died in other words they're in the grave now okay are you understanding that so the rest of the dead live not again until after this time period so they that live and reign with Christ are those of us that are alive right now and that are saved okay pretty simple is it really that complicated I mean if you just slow down and think the rest of the dead see the dead live not again until the end after this, this time period All right, we got the living the living that are saved reign with Christ during this time period which is now those that have died they will not live again until after this time period okay are you seeing it if you don't see it rewind this video play this again or read and believe the Word of God because it won't change it's still there Revelation 20 they the living that's us today All right. we live we that are saved live with Christ because we live with Christ we reign with Christ right. those that have died they will be resurrected at the last day after this time period oops 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 okay this is consistent all throughout the Bible all right so and this is the father's will which has sent me that of all which he has given me I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at that at the last day the last day is when when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we read about this in Matthew 24 mark 13 Luke 21 when his disciples asked Jesus specifically what is the sign of thy coming in of the end of the world and what's Jesus say that he will appear in the clouds of heaven even Revelation 1 says behold he come with the clouds and every eye shall see him the end of the world is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day so the last day is at the end of the world 
when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And I will raise him up. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. When's the last day? The last day is only, can only be when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It can't be after, certainly won't be before. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life. Right now, those of us that are born of God have eternal life. Right now. And I will raise him up at the last day. Those of us that have eternal life right now, God will raise us up at the last day when Jesus returns in the clouds of heaven. When he returns in the clouds of heaven, it is the last day. It is the end of this world. The last day. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. The last day is the trump of God. Right, with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, signifying the end of this world. It's not a passing phase, man. It's a big deal. In Isaiah, it's called the great day. Great and terrible. Great and terrible. Why is it called great and terrible day? You ever thought about that? The great and terrible day of the Lord the great and terrible it's great for us and terrible for the unsaved because when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven all the tribes of the earth will mourn why because they know it's the end of this world they're gonna know it you claim to be a uh, Christian Yet you don't know it? Well, they're going to know it, and you're, you're going to know it too. Luke 21 t tells us that men's hearts will be failing them for fear. Right? They're, men are going to be having heart attacks when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven because they know this is it. This is it. This is it. There's no second chances. There's no bonus thousand years. That's not in the Bible anywhere. There's not an extra opportunity to get saved. I mean, this is it. This is it. Now consider what M Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21 talk or say. Uh, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Yeah. <laughs> the sun shall not give her light. Or I'm sorry, the sun, excuse me, apologize. The sun shall be darkened. The sun shall be dark, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. This is the great and terrible day of the Lord. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the great and terrible day. All right, the great and terrible day. The great and terrible day. So, what's Second Peter chapter three? Say, I mean, this is 
It's overwhelming. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So no man knows the day or the hour when the Lord comes. Right? So Jesus will come as a thief in the night. And when he comes, men's hearts will be failing them for fear. Because they know it's the end of the world. All right, all the tribes of the earth will mourn because they know this is it. They waited too long. They waited too long. Because when this happens, when this moment happens, it's too late for them to get saved. And the, and, uh, the Bible even tells us they won't repent anyways. They'll just try to hide themselves. They'll weep. They'll beg. You know, but they won't believe. All right, they won't. They won't believe. They think they can get around. They find another way, and they can't. They won't, and they will perish. They will die the second death on this day. Right on this day, because when this happens. We are lifted up in the air, right? First the dead in Christ, and they, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is it. We're lifted up, and all the unsaved people will die the second death. It's the end of the world. It's the great and terrible day of the Lord. It's judgment day. Who is saved, who is not saved. Just like what we read about in Matthew 13, the harvest of the wheat and the tares. The wheat are gathered up into the barn, and the tares are burned. That's the end of the world. Right? And this is consistent all throughout the Bible. All throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. In 2 Peter chapter 3, But the day the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the element shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. This is consistent. Think about what we read in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21, when it says, The sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. It's the same thing. We're talking about the same moment in time when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right. So when the sun is darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. This is when the earth is going to melt. All these things on the earth shall be dissolved. Right. And when is this? This is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It's not a thousand years later. Why would you think that? Well, that's what Reverend Smitty says. So you're going to trust Reverend Smitty over God Almighty. Well, let's see what happens, okay? Let's see who's right. That's all. That's what you believe. Okay, we're going to see. We're going to find out. All right, but it, I tell you right now, knowing with absolute certainty that when Jesus comes, that's it. Okay? There is no thousand year extension. There is no thousand year period after Jesus returns. I know that with absolute certainty. I know that with absolute 100% certainty because it's from Genesis to Revelation. It's all throughout the Bible. When Jesus comes, it's the end of this world, and then it's the beginning of a new world, an everlasting world world a world without end a world where there's no more pain no more sorrow no more crying no more death a world without sin okay a perfect
Pure World. And this is what I put my hope into. Anything less, I don't want it. Anything less, I don't, I don't care for it at all. But this is what God has promised us, a perfect world. A world of everlasting life. And it can only be an everlasting, a world of everlasting life if it's perfect. Otherwise, you're talking about hell. Right? So, I know with absolute certainty that when Jesus comes, it's the end of the world. Right? Absolute certainty. And therefore, when I hear these guys teaching this idea of a thousand years after Jesus returns I, it's extremely extremely shameful All right, extremely shameful because it's not going to happen and what you're doing is you're telling unsaved people hey you don't have to believe in Jesus now you can just wait I mean that's as cruel and evil as anything that is taught on the earth today there is not it's not possible to teach a more wicked doctrine than this idea of a millennial kingdom a thousand year reign after Jesus returns the single most wicked evil teaching in the world today again because Instead of preaching the good news of the kingdom to come, you're preaching them, oh, you can just wait until Jesus comes, and then you'll see. Then you can start to believe. No, because when Jesus comes, it's the end of this world. Men's hearts will be failing them for fear. Men are going to be having heart attacks. All the tribes of the earth will mourn when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Right? So there is no second chance. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, that's it. It's the end of this world. Alright, so uh, let me go back here and just say that, hey, Right now we are living and reigning with Christ. Right, the rest of the dead live not again until Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. What happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven? First the dead in Christ shall rise, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. The rest of the dead live not again until the thousand... You can't put these pieces together. There's something wrong with your heart. Well, I, I'll tell you right now, it's because you don't believe what you're reading. It's very simple. I know it. I can see it. It's obvious to me. But how do I convey that to you? Huh? Because you're still putting your trust in, into Reverend Schmitty. Reverend Schmitty. Whatever Reverend... Well, Reverend Schmitty didn't say it that way. All right. Well, when you were a child, you thought as a child, right? And so when you're in school... You were taught as a child, and you thought as a child, and you spake as a child, and you understood as a child, and you thought as a child. Right, so, as a child, you just, well, Teacher Smitty says this, and so I just echo what Teacher Smitty says, and I get good grades. Doesn't matter at all if you understand it, just as long as you write down the right answer, as long as you repeat what the teacher says. That's what matters. Right? Doesn't matter if you understand it at all. It doesn't have to make sense. All you have to do is remember and repeat what Teacher Smitty said. And now these children grow up and they're still they still think like children. Right? So instead of Teacher Smitty, now it's Reverend Smitty. Well, Reverend Smitty says this, and so being a good student. I just re I'll just repeat what Reverend Schmitty says. Well, it's time for you all to grow up and become men and put away childish things. 
All right, because I'm telling you right now, when this plays out, you're going to find out that there is no more time for the unsaved. No more time. All right. It's going to be the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, just like he said. Just like it's prophesied back in Genesis 3, verse 15. When the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Jesus is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever. Right? We read the same thing here in Revelation 20. That's why I say it's from Genesis to Revelation, all throughout the Bible. The same prophecy told to us many different ways, many different angles. It, we got pictures many different pictures of the same thing. And I think the more you read, the clearer it becomes. But it all starts by believing the Bible that you hold in your hands. Okay. So, here in verse 9, in Revelation 20, verse 9, it says, And they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. All right, so where are the saints? When, when Jesus comes back, where are the saints? Well, uh, one place we can go to is 1 Thessalonians 4, where it says, When Jesus comes back, the dead in Christ shall rise. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the clouds. So we're going to be up in the clouds when Jesus comes back. Alright, so in Revelation 20, when it talks about the camp of the saints in the beloved city, well, we know that's up in the clouds. Think about John 14, where Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, but I go and prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again to receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also right there that where I am there ye may be also right so Jesus he says in my father's house are many mansions which is in heaven right so Jesus goes to prepare a place for us and when he will come in the clouds of heaven, in that beloved city, that's in heaven. Okay. You know that's true. And so we're up in the air. This goes back to, and it shall bruise thy head. It goes back to Genesis 3, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. God is going to stop his foot on the head of the serpent. Destroying all evil forever. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured him. This is consistent with Genesis 3 verse 15. It's consistent with 2 Peter chapter 3. When it says the element shall melt with fervent heat. And the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now, you know that this world was destroyed by water. Right? But now is this world reserved unto fire. Right? So, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, there won't be a great flood of water. There will be a fire will come down from God out of heaven. Right? Pretty simple stuff, isn't it? Pretty simple stuff. Pretty amazing and pretty wonderful. Why? Why put it? Why drag this thing out for another thousand years, man? doesn't make any sense what these guys are teaching when Jesus comes it's the end of the world and the beloved city the Jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all and now think about this I'm gonna end it on this right here I'm gonna end it on this thought right here these bozo the clowns and these guys are clowns and they got they learned from clowns and they teach as clowns, they understand as clowns, they are clowns. Um, they, and they're not putting any thought into anything that they teach. And that's why I implore you to just think. Put some thought into this. 
And it starts by believing the words that you read. That's where it starts. And once you believe the Word of God, once you actually believe the Bible, now you ought to be able to see. Just, if you're not getting it, just slow down. All right? And think. You got a brain. God gave you a brain. Use it. All right, so these bozo the clowns, they will try to argue that this beloved city is Jerusalem in the Middle East, on the earth. And however you want to phrase it, man, they're going to tell you that this city is on the earth. That's what they tell you over and over. I mean, to get them to really talk about it and to put some thought into it, that's hard. But this is where they have, they have this city on the earth. Now, Revelation 21. Verse 2, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. Oops, wait a second. Coming down from God out of heaven. I thought you said it was on the earth. Oh, man. I mean, this is beyond stupid. In Revelation 20, somehow... The city of God is on the earth. And the next thing you know, the city of God is coming down out of heaven. See, I don't, you know, this is, it's so stupid. It's so stupid. These guys aren't putting any thought into anything. And so that's why I ask you to put some thought into this. Okay. Because it's really, it's not complicated at all. You already know that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. You already know that when he comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up out of the earth. You already know that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world, and the unsaved will be killed. They will die the second death. You already know when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the great day, the great and, ter the great and terrible day of the Lord. You already know that. You know it's judgment day when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. You already know that. No, so knowing that. Whether it's Revelation 20, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Corinthians 15, John 14, whatever it is, 2 Peter chapter 3. Just from Genesis to Revelation. All throughout the Bible. It's consistent consistent all throughout the Bible. And it's not complicated. You don't need to go to school to learn this stuff. It's all right there in the Bible. It's all right there in front of your eyes. All you have to do is believe. Believe the words that you read are from God, directly from God, because they are. Jesus says the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life. 